Good evening, everyone, and thank you for joining us again on a Monday evening at uh, in the in the in the mid fall, mid autumn already. How about that? November first, twenty twenty one. If you're watching us from the U.S. or Canada, then you know yesterday was a holiday. It was Halloween for for folks. One of a, it's like the near beginning of our big holiday season here in the United States and Canada as well, I suppose. So it was a, yeah, near 2021 is almost over, almost complete. It's been a tough year for, for a lot of us. I can certainly empathize um, with everything that's going on still going on right with that pandemic and i again I, I certainly thank you for spending some of your 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 precious time with with me this evening and tonight we'll be talking about uh, seeing eye to eye right so that's little eye and big eye and we'll talk about what that is how we can recognize and acknowledge the difference between big I and little I. And so before we begin, as is customary, we will do our guided <clears throat> meditation. Um, and what is important for us to consider is um, when, we're, when we're thinking about the little I in this case, I'll give you a little hint, a little bit about the ego and whatnot. Um, so for this guided meditation, we're going to take a break for <clears throat> self-compassion. And that's really important. All right. You know, have some compassion for ourselves and maybe not let our ego drive us into places that are, <clears throat> that are unhealthy uh, for us. Excuse me. <clears throat> so this practice is called uh, a self-compassion break. So go ahead relax and adjust however you like. Go ahead and close your eyes and you can just listen to what I will say to you and guide you along. And uh, this is something that uh, you can do anytime during the day or night, okay? Whenever you feel that need for self-compassion. But again, for tonight, I'll be the one guiding you. And so to practice sec this exercise, we'll actually need to call up a a little bit of suffering. And so I would like, I'd like to um, invite you to think about a situation in your life right now that is difficult for you. Maybe you're feeling stressed or having a relationship problem, or you're worried about something that might happen. And I'd like for you to think about something that is just a little bit difficult, maybe not so overwhelmingly difficult at this point, especially if you're new to practicing the, the self-compassion break. So finding a situation and getting in touch with it, what's going on, what happened, or what might happen, who said what, go ahead and really bring that situation to life in, in your, in your imagination or in your mind's eye. Think about some of the details, the tone of the voice, the expression on another person's face, 
how you felt inside. All the details that you can recall. And then I'm going to be saying a series of phrases that are designed to help us remember the three components of self-compassion. So uh, when we need it most. So the first phrase is, this is a moment of suffering, right? This is a moment of suffering. We're bringing mindful awareness to the fact that suffering is present. And I'd invite you to find some language that speaks to you. Something like this is really hard right now, or I really am struggling with this situation. We're actually turning towards our difficulty, acknowledging it and naming it. And this is a moment of suffering. The second phrase is suffering is a part of life. Okay. Suffering is a part of life. And with that, we are reminding ourselves of our common humanity. Suffering is a part of life. And again, finding language that fits or speaks personally to you. And again, it may be something like, it's not abnormal to feel this way. Many people are going through similar situations as I am. The degree of suffering may be different. The flavor of the suffering may be different, but suffering is a part of life, part of being human. And then the third phrase is, may I be kind to myself in this moment? And to support bringing this loving kindness to yourself. And go ahead and Put your hands over your heart or some other place on your body that feels soothing and comforting. Maybe your heart, 
maybe your stomach. Maybe just resting on your lap. And then feeling the warmth of your hands, that gentle touch, letting those feelings of care just stream through your fingers. May I be kind to myself. And using any language again, that supports the sense of kindness, <clears throat> perhaps language you would use with a good friend or someone you love or care about who is going through a very similar situation. Maybe something like, I'm here for you. It's going to be okay. I care about you. You can even use a diminutive that feels comfortable. Something like, oh, darling or sweetheart. I'm so sorry for you. Or you can try calling yourself by your first name. You can say your name too. Anything that feels natural. Just to express your deep, sincere wish that you be well and happy and free from suffering. And then letting go of the practice and noticing how your body feels right now. And then allowing any of those sensations to just be, just be as they are. Go ahead and maybe open your eyes and begin to reorientate yourself to your surroundings. Maybe readjust your body as we begin to transition to our Dharma talk. And we can reflect back on some of the words, some of the phrasing that we used in this guided meditation for um, seeing eye to eye. There's going to be some relevance, some overlap, which is why it's important that we recognize the little eye and the little eye. And so what is the little eye? Right. We heard a lot of those and thinking about the guided meditation that we just talked about. The little I, right? I feel sorry for you, or I love you, or I care about you, right? The little I is referring to ourselves. Right? We can think about it as an ego as well. And it's not necessarily 
something that we can or should uh, shy away from. It's important to recognize it because um, without correct recognition and acknowledgement, the little I, what we would call the self, but in Buddhism we know that there is no true self, right? but what we would call the self, the ego, can be fragile and can be damaging and detrimental can be selfish. And so it's important that we are able to recognize in a situation or an encounter or an emotional state. Are we thinking about the little I, the ego, the self? Or are we thinking about what in broader terms would be the big I, which would be all of the connectedness of the people or with the people around us, the world, the trees, the plants, the air, the water, the solar system, the universe, that big connection as well. And so how can we recognize when we are thinking in terms of the I for the ego? And again, remember, it's not necessarily bad to think about the I, the little I, in certain terms or in certain situations. If we are being selfish and malicious, the little self the little ego, the little I is damaging. It prohibits us from truly experiencing what is out there. And it shields us from emotions that maybe we don't want to experience, a vulnerability sometimes. So think about when maybe you were a youngster and maybe you didn't do too well on a test and you kind of just blew it off. I don't really care. It's just a test, right? Maybe you said that in front of your friends. I'm just too cool. Who cares about a test. But inside you did. That is the ego on the way out or on the displaying toughness, right? That really isn't there because on the inside, you're feeling soft. You're feeling hurt and that's okay. So that is one, you know, a simple example of where the little eye can be very damaging. But when can the little eye be a beacon of light? of goodness. Think about when you help someone. I would love to give you a hand. I would love to help you. Right? I, we're saying that sense, I as in you as in the person, but that also coincides and significantly overlaps with the big I. The whole idea of connectedness because it is the, it is the little I that is recognizing that it is a part of a larger system, a larger consciousness, a larger goodness to help others. And so that is a really important distinction between the I, the little I, and the big I. It's very important. And the big I is wondrous. It is warm. It is inviting. It is caring. It is reciprocating. It is empathetic. It is compassionate.
And so what are some examples? I'll invite you to leave into the comments um, as you watch this. Feel free to, you know, comment what some examples of a big eye or the little eye where, where the little eye, the little self overlapped in such a positive way into the big eye, to the whole connectedness that we are a part of. I think that's an amazing, amazing realization. How we can recognize that. Sometimes a, 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 a way that we can recognize a little eye is when we're not being honest with ourselves to portray us as something we are not. It's okay to cry. It's okay to be joyful. When we see certain individuals always maintain like that tough exterior facade. Sometimes they're really trying to have a conversation with the vulnerability that they feel. And so that stops or that prohibits them sometimes from really connecting with everyone that's out there. But we can see glimpses of it sometimes, glimpses of that sometimes, right? Maybe they own a pet, maybe they own an animal, right? They have a dog or a cat or something like that. And they may be stony faced with humans, but as soon as they see their little, little dog or whatever, their heart just melts. So that would be an example, just a, a small example. There's probably a lot of, a lot of other examples out there to consider. And even when, even that person with that stony face hardness, maybe they donate to the animal shelter. That would be the little eye connecting with a big eye, doing some good. So everybody has that. Remember, that's the Buddha nature. Right, that kindness that we all have within us. And so, it's okay. It's okay to, to, to let our guards down and experience all of the wonder and all of the friendship and commodity or camaraderie, not commodity, camaraderie that we as human beings share. It doesn't matter if you're sitting in Philadelphia or Los Angeles. You have a relationship with someone in Beijing, in Hanoi, in Pyongyang. We're all people. We have that connection. We're all part of the same same consciousness, same existence. And so this is such a really interesting topic and in that this is going to continue on into our next Dharma talk where we'll continue um, with the big eye and the little eye, right? The little eye with the ego and the big eye the universal connectedness. It's so it's such an important topic that it deserves, um, you know, a two talk, a two session Dharma talk. And so we will be back in two weeks, all right, to continue this, this wonderful realization. Actually, this month is kind of cool. We've got three, three Dharma talks. So our third one will be on mindfulness in the workplace. 
And so that'd be a fun one, fun one as well. Learning how we can bring our mindfulness to a workplace. We can do it all the time. And so I would also like to, to um, you know, warmly invite you all to our weekly sanghas from many wonderful communities that we support. We've got the uh, veteran sangha, teen sangha, rainbow sangha, our healing sangha. So all of the days and times are um, posted on our on our website, and you can go ahead and register for them. And we would love to see you. That's what we're here for, to help uh, help everybody out in the best way that we can. So you can learn how to warmly and positively overlap the little eye and the big eye. And so also with this being November, um, a lot of times you'll find um, various organizations with their pledge drives and so forth. And so we're no different as well. Right. So we will, um, you know, we do ask for your support as well, but what I would like to offer instead of, you know, you're more than welcome to uh, make a donation off of our directly on our, on our web page, but also the Amazon smile doesn't cost you anything. Amazon smile program. You can designate us as, as your charity. We're an IRS registered uh, religious organization, charitable organization. And what happens is, is you know, whenever you purchase something, you know, Amazon does the donation, not you. It doesn't raise your price. It doesn't decrease your price either, but, um, and they will uh, forward a small percentage of whatever your purchase is towards um, helping our programs, all these different sanghas and, um, for upcoming 2022 year as well. So I would ask that you do that uh, if you find it in your heart to do so. And also don't forget to um, like and subscribe to our channel as well. That is a, another wonderful way that you can show your support for us. And maybe you can find some ways to help in your community as well. Maybe it's just recycling. Maybe you see a piece of trash you know, on the ground outside, pick it up and put it in the trash can. That's a way to give back. So many wonderful ways to just give back to your community. And with that, my dear friends, I do once again warmly appreciate you spending some of your time with us on a Monday evening. I know your time is precious and I sincerely, sincerely with, with open hearted gratitude, thank you for joining us and feel free to leave comments below and I will respond to them pretty quickly. That's what I do. And with that, my friends, I wish you a night of peace and ease and stay in touch. Namaste.